I just wanted to get your your initial thought on what we're going to be talking about tonight on Chris Benoit. Everybody seems to have a different opinion. Uh, some opinions are absolutely the same, but everybody's got their own perspective on what exactly happened and what his legacy is on professional wrestling. So what are your thoughts on, on Chris Benoit and the tragedy that happened six years ago? Yeah, I mean, I, I, since we're going back to story time of where we were when it happened, I was working at my old job as a chef, and I got a text message from the owner of B4W, who's Ryan, and he let me know that, you know, what happened with Chris Benoit, and I was completely shocked by that. I couldn't believe that happened. So I, when I got home, I watched, I was able to watch for all just in time where it started, where it ended, and yeah, that was just a very, uh, very sad day, you know, especially like the videos that they played, the uh, reactions to the wrestlers. It was a very, very sad moment uh, to see that happening. And then as the days, you know, transferred of what was going on, it, you know, now we see the true thing of what's going on here. And it was just a very sad thing to see that, you know, how can someone who we know is not violent, even though he portrays one as, you know, as a crippler on television, just just kill off his entire family in one night. It's just a very weird, you know, story that, that broke out and that brought wrestling, I would say, back out into the spotlight, not for the good reasons, but it brought it out to where now people had to question, you know, they had to change a lot of things in pro wrestling because of this incident. Now they have completely changed. You know, even though they had their steroid policy, now they really had a kick in the high gear. The chair shots stopped. You know, it changed a lot of things in pro wrestling. Yeah, it absolutely did, and to this day, it has changed the course of professional wrestling history. And um, if there's a, a silver lining you can take from this, you know, it kind of gives the the professional wrestlers that outlook that says, "Hey, we don't want this to happen to us," because there's no question about it that Chris Dunlop, in some way, shape, or form, lost his f in mind on that day. You know, everybody claims that he was, you know, completely entrenched in the business that the business consumed him, and that he loved it. He loved his son. He loved his wife and all that kind of stuff. Although there was documented problems in their marriage, you know, uh, I've read a couple books on it, and this one author who hates professional wrestling, by the way, and hates WWE, so he kind of had a skewed look at it, but I at least got this, this vantage point from him. And um, he was talking about how he interviewed a couple of Nancy Benoit's friends after the fact. And they were very candid in saying that, you know, the love life wasn't good between the two. And uh, Chris suffered from the, what, what a lot of steroid users suffer from, and that is a lack of libido and stuff like that. And that caused a lot of fights between the two. So, you know, uh, whether that had something to do with the murder or not, that it's something we'll never, quite frankly, know. And uh, I personally don't think it was premeditated that Chris Benoit, like you said before, Tove, that Chris Benoit woke up one morning and said, hey, I'm going to – I can't be ECW champion. I, I, I went to the ECW show. I don't like it. My career has gone down a notch. You know, I don't want to wrestle CM Punk, whatever. He, he wasn't upset about anything like that. I feel like he got into a fight with his wife, um, brutalized her. Probably, maybe, I'm not saying probably, but maybe he killed her on purpose or maybe he did it accidentally. You know, it, it's just – it's all kinds of speculation – and that's what I'm going to keep it on. But do I think he should be glorified in any way, shape, or form? Should we take the wrestler Chris Benoit, the entertainer who we watched in WWE, WCW all those years, and separate it from the man that committed these murders? Absolutely not. Bottom line is the guy's a murderer, and that's, that's all there is to it in my mind. But there's a lot of people that have their own opinions on this, and I want to hear from you. So give us a call, 760 888 Four nine. I'm going to go to the lines right now. We got some callers, and uh, I'm going to kick it to the five one six area code. You've been in hold for a while, five one six. Um, you're on the air right now with PWP Radio. What's your name? Where you're from? Matthew Lowry, West Bro, New York. Hey, what's up, man? How you doing tonight? I'm doing all right. I heard about what we heard about. What's about Chris Benoit? I know. I agree with Phil Harley. With the death of uh, with, the, with the death of Eddie Guerrero in 2005, I think it well, did have however have a bad effect, had effect on Chris somewhat. But I did put since uh, 2007, as I wrote in the PWP article, it was more like it, it, it was like there was there was involved, was there was like 
brain damage. I didn't, there were so many possibilities, but there was on the, they cut him out. Edit, the WWE cut him out on the footage. They took him out of. They took rid him off a bit because it, because it, it was always it was hard to get along, and it was always understandable because it been, after that after his death, it made me question the sport. After what he did, it really made me question this. And it, and it was really, it, should we forgive him? Should we ever forgive him for what we did? I think we should forgive him. And I mean, not, play, not praise him for what he did, but for throughout his career, he's still regarded as the absolute best. No doubt about it, man. Well, you're, you're separating the performer from, you're separating the performer from, from the, uh, the man himself. Um, they were one of the oh, same, I'm, as far as everybody says. They're both the same. Oh yeah. All right, I, I apologize. It was one of the, they're both one of the same. Ben Wallace should. I felt it was the truth. I felt that I wanted to air, air it out, get it out in the open. So uh, I really every article I wrote about it. I think it, I think it was. I think I wanted to be more honest and more open minded than I and than anybody else than anybody could else. Well, yeah, I, I've talked to a lot of people, whether it's on Twitter or Facebook or whatever that. You know, or glorifying Chris Benoit. There was a freaking Chris Benoit on the Chris Benoit guy sign at the pay per view last week, and uh, that was completely shocking. And there are there are a lot of fans that are still very adamant about his inclusion on WWE programming, just like they include the late great Eddie Guerrero and other professional wrestlers who've passed away. But you got to understand, it's apples and oranges. This is a different scenario. If, if Chris Benoit had just killed himself and not murdered his wife and murdered his son in cold blood, then maybe, you know, maybe they could still include him. But as far as, as murders are concerned, there's really, like, if they, I, I saw the business. If, if I'm pro com, and if one of my writers, if you, Matt, you killed somebody or whatever, I'm not going to keep you on my staff. I'm not going to talk about you. It's just business. It's business and it's public relations, and I don't blame WWE to get as far away from this scenario as possible because it wasn't their fault that Chris Benoit did this. So why should they continue to promote Chris Benoit in any way, shape, or form? And that's, that's a question that, you know, a lot of people have different opinions on, and we'll get to a lot of different opinions tonight. But uh, just hang on and hold. I'll bring it right back in. I'm going to go back to the lines, and we're going to go to uh, – my oh, man, Frank from Russell Reaction. Frank, what's going on, man? Jay, what's happening, man? I'm very sorry to have messed up your intro before. You guys are doing a beautiful job. And to tell you the truth, it's a good reason. I'm a big fan of the show. You know I am. So I wanted to hear what you guys had to say before I even came on. So very happy to be on. You guys are doing awesome so far. Well, thanks, man. I just I, There was two 516s up there, and I got kind of confused. And it's, it's not a problem whatsoever. But I... Uh, Let's let's hear your thoughts on on Chris Benoit and the, the legacy is he is left. Well, you know me and my photographic memory. I tell you, it's crazy how things happen because I don't know if you this has ever happened to you. You just you get back on somebody else's entrance theme, like even a while after it's out. I was me and and Joe even we were like jamming Benoit, and we were so hyped for the pay per view, and we're like, oh my god, we're gonna get a great match from Punk and Benoit could not believe that it didn't go down. Like, when that happened, we knew something was up right then and there. And that never left my mind all through the rest of that show and the rest of the night. P.S., I had to drive to my brother's graduation from high school that night, and I'll get the call from Joe as I'm going out there. So now I'm sitting through a whole graduation, and I'm thinking about what the hell just happened. And it was, it was a crazy night. I mean, I tell you the truth. I'm, I'm watching WB programming weekly since 1990. And uh, this nothing like this ever happened. And the flip flop that happened, it was it was a tribute show for God's sake. Vince is like almost crying in the ring, it, and then all of a sudden you have a, a, a murder and a tragedy on your hands that everybody is throwing their hands up and running away from. Devin McMichael is coming on CNN and burying people and talking about how Steve Austin beat the crap out of her. And the whole thing just got completely out of hand way too quick. And I agree with whoever said it before. I'm sorry, I don't remember who did. But the person who said it was a fight between him and his wife, yeah. I mean, listen, we're, we're almost 30 years old, us. We're around that age. We've had relationships. Things go on behind closed doors that nobody else sees. And I think that's what happened. And I'm sure 
maybe he would have been in a better state of mind if he was a world champion at that time, but that's not how it was. He was still a little bit demoted. I don't feel like he was because the fans were still looking forward to his work, and we always appreciated that. He always got the applause from us, so I don't buy that. There was problems there that had nothing to do with wrestling, and this just ended up a, a very, very big mess. Uh, absolutely correct. Uh, there, there's no real other way to paint that picture, and uh, I've read different stories about what had happened that day. I've heard that Nancy's family tried to flip the script on the entire thing because they wanted more of the estate, and they were trying to prove that Daniel was killed first. I've heard stories that maybe Chris, there, there were theories out there, that Chris was going to try to make it look like it was a, uh, it was a murder, that somebody tried to enter the house forcefully, that uh, he was able to somehow just be injured from it. There were a lot of different scenarios out there that have been thrown out, and we're going to talk about some of them, including well, the, the, first, the, the first story that the first story that broke in the news was that the whole him and the family had been wiped out; that somebody had broken in and killed them. That's the first thing that we all heard, and that's yeah, why exactly. they went on with it. That's why they went on with a tribute show on Raw. Well, that's another thing that is controversial, Frank, is that the timeline of this all, like Michael Benoit, Chris Benoit's father, found out about this sometime in the evening, Eastern time, sometime around like 5 o'clock Eastern Standard Time. And he, and, and also another guy who knew about it around 5 o'clock Eastern Time that day, I'm talking Monday, Dave Meltzer. He knew about it as well. Now, if Dave Meltzer knows about it, if, you know, uh, uh, Michael Benoit knows, if, uh, Jerry McDevitt, apparently the WWE's attorney at the time, probably still is. If he, if he knows about it, don't you think Vince McMahon knows about it? You know, don't you think there's, there's some way, shape, or form that Vince McMahon knew there was a murder and they were calling it a double murder-suicide at that time? It, it's kind of it's kind of tough. It, it paints WWE into a corner in the light of whether or not they went through with this tribute show knowing it was a double murder-suicide. It, and and the, the uh, reaction from a guy like William Regal on that show, which I watched last night, was very strange. He, ha- he held back everything. He didn't say much. He kind of just walked off the set after his little uh, speech was over. And uh, Chavo Guerrero's, his little monologue was, was really heart-wrenching because he's the guy that Chris Benoit was in contact with throughout that entire weekend. So uh, yes, that's yes. the stuff we'll talk about. Let's take a full circle. I'm going to go back to Toph. I'm going to bring you in, Toph, and we're going to talk about a different question on this whole Chris Benoit thing. Now, you already stated your stance on it in general, but a lot of people are thinking there is some kind of conspiracy theory behind this, and the most popular one seems to be the Kevin Sullivan theory, that somehow, some way, Kevin Sullivan was responsible for this. And there's a lot of people out there that believe this, man. I'm not talking about just one idiot that posted on, I'm not going to say idiot, one guy that posted on a forum about this and one, one guy who made a YouTube video about this. A lot of people are on board that Kevin Sullivan, the Satanist, apparently he's a real Satan lover in real life, not just on TV, that he had something to do with this. Uh, Tell what are your thoughts on this Kevin Sullivan theory? I mean, who knows? We live in a strange world. Uh, he is a Satanist. I can't confirm that. I know that much. Um, but... Uh, it's strange. I mean, I know the story about Sullivan. I know he booked Benoit and Nancy to be, you know, an on-screen couple, but what was, you know, fake became real. And I remember there were intense matches in WCW. Even those were some of the first matches I saw. That was kind of around the time when I really started to become a big wrestling fan around, like, 95, 96. And I always remember that crazy brawl Kevin Solomon and Benoit had the Great American Bash. I think that was it. I'm not sure. It may have been that pay-per-view. So, I mean, it's definitely plausible. And um, I don't really have much to say. I mean, anything can happen, but to kind of – Go back to what, you know, Frank and what you were talking about. I didn't really explain my initial reaction. Um, I kind of um, fell out of WWE shortly after I finished high school. Uh, the death of Eddie Guerrero was a little too much for me, and uh, I just kind of lost my interest. And pretty much from, like, after Eddie's death to about 2008, ish I just stopped watching WWE. Uh, when I found out Benoit died, it was very early in the morning. 
I was taking a math class. It was probably one of the most difficult classes of my life. Uh, you know how it is when you go to school early in the morning, and, you know, you get there about 30 minutes before class starts. You go on the computer, and you just start browsing. And I just kind of came across the article about what happened to Nawa and his family. I was just very confused. I, I was just trying to find more information, but the story had just leaked, and I didn't really know what to think of it. And I had to go back to class, and I had to take a test. And my main, my mind just was not there at all. I was like the hardest test I've ever taken. You know, it's like something happens to you personally, and you're just in a classroom, and you're just like, I don't want to be here. And, you know, it's just very difficult and very hard. Uh, you know, I've seen so much footage, so many interviews, like you already touched to Jay about William Regal. You know, when he did his testimonial about Ben Wild, it was very short. You know, Regal just said all he was willing to say was Ben Wild was the best ever, and that was all he was going to say at that time. You could tell in the look on Regal's face that he knew more, but he wasn't willing to say. I've seen many other interviews. Uh, Kurt Angle also did an interview once with RF Video where he said that Ben Wall called him at one point and said that he was about to snap. You know, he was very, very upset because it was uh, Father's Day weekend was coming because it was around Father's Day weekend, close after, and uh, Benoit was upset that he could not spend time with his family, and, and he called Kurt Angle, and he told Angle that he was going to snap, and Angle told Benoit to take time off. But as you said earlier, Jay, Benoit was just so dedicated to the business. He was a perfectionist. You know, he didn't want to, you know, he, wanted, he's, he wasn't the kind of guy that just wanted to kind of ease out of his contract, you know. He was the kind of guy that wanted to do all his house show dates. He wanted to do Raw and SmackDown. I mean, you guys remember how Benoit was. You know, he didn't have an ego. He didn't mind putting guys over. But at the same time, it was giving him family problems. Chris Jericho said after Eddie Guerrero's death, Benoit became reclusive. Uh, Booker T, MT, um, MVP, Charmel all gave similar accounts. I really feel for Chavo Guerrero because Chavo was the closest to Eddie and Benoit before their deaths, and he couldn't do anything to stop either. Um, so, you know, Ted DiBiase, Bret Hart, they both have come on record and say that there's no way that they can be convinced that Chris Benoit that they knew did that. So, I mean, I mean I've mean, i even read one story that Benoit would take planes trips just to go back to Atlanta just to see his family for like two hours and take another plane trip back to wherever he was going to be performing that night. So, and then there's the testimonial of Stephanie McMahon. Everyone forgets about what Stephanie said. I mean, she was crying, and Stephanie said that when she was pregnant with her first child, Benoit was so happy for her, you know, like genuinely happy and stuff like that. So he was definitely a good person. And, um, and seeing, oh, CM Punk, that's one, that's one big thing people keep never m mention or talk about. Uh, Chris Benoit had actually contacted CM Punk. You can find this on an interview. Uh, CM Punk, he says this, he said this plenty of times. You can see it on YouTube. Uh, CM Punk, if you guys remember, he had a match with uh, that Marcus Corvan dude, and uh, they had a match, and uh, Marcus kind of dropped Punk really hard on his neck, and uh, he didn't have, like, a bad neck injury, but it was kind of sore. And if you guys remember, Benoit and Punk were supposed to have a match, I think, at Night of Champions, and Benoit had actually contacted Punk to see how he was doing. He contacted him and gave him advice on what to do because Benoit, he knew about neck injuries because he had one himself, and he also counseled Edge about his neck injuries. Benoit contacted Punk during the weekend that all that crap happened. Does that sound like someone of a murderer? How could he do that? How could he contact Punk to check on his well-being and then proceed to kill his wife and his son? I mean, it doesn't make sense. There's clearly something more to this story. I mean, Punk himself has said this. He even said it last year at the uh, convention thing that happens during the summer because there's a video on YouTube where someone asked him about Benoit and Punk. Even he, he basically said that, you know, they can't mention him for the reasons that you already explained, Jay. But, I mean, that's a, that's to me, that's like the biggest plot hole in this entire case, the fact that he text messaged Punk several times to check on his well-being because Benoit was a perfectionist and he wanted to make sure that his opponent was ready to go for that match. How could he do that yet still commit those murders? That, to me, that's the biggest plot hole. But, you know, we'll never know what happened, you know. Some things we're just well, not supposed to know. What do you think? Do you think he committed the murders? Do you think Kevin, do Kevin Sullivan did he commit the murders? Like, do you think that Chris Benoit did this? I think that maybe he may have killed his wife. I can see that. But I just do not believe he killed his son. I think that there is another part of this case that we don't know about, that the government or the police or whoever, I think there is something else that this, about this case that was never leaked. It just it doesn't add up to me. As someone that's met Benoit in person several times when I was a kid, 
as someone that's met other wrestlers, and I've just looked at all the testimonials, it just doesn't add up. I think there's something else about this case that we'll never know what happened. But I do well, believe he may have killed his wife. Yeah, that's something that we'll talk about. Is the investigation was really kind of uh, shoddy at best, as I'm quoting Phil Mitchell in our chat room right now. If you want to get in the chat room, go for it. There's some discussion going on. But uh, he said the investigation was shoddy, and it was. Like, downright, just uh, amateur-type stuff from uh, the Fayetteville Police Department. They kind of just said it was a double murder-suicide and closed the book on it right away without, you know, keeping the case open, investigating it a little farther. They just came to that conclusion, and they could be right. They could be right on the money. But the timelines got really twisted up at some point in time in this whole thing. Uh, even WWE, their story changed multiple times on this. But uh, I'm going to kick it to Will now. And uh, what are your thoughts on any kind of conspiracy, whether it's Kevin Sullivan or not, involving this? Or do you simply think that Chris Benoit just stopped one day and decided to kill his uh, wife and kid? You know, I'm a big advocate on watching, like, you know, crime shows and, like, real crimes happen and things like that. I'm a big advocate of it, you know, especially when it comes to evidence and things like that. You know, a lot of times people have these psychological issues and, again, you don't know about it. Murderers and, you know, you know, psychopaths and all that have different, you know, ways of thinking. And, and a lot of times it will be normal to the normal person I mean, you look at the uh, the um, the big killer. Uh, what is it? A JD killer? I forget the J. You know, you know what I'm talking about that killer. You know, it seemed like a normal guy who did scouts and did camping trips and was a priest and found it, the JD uh, killer ended up killing so many people. Or so I forget the killer's name, but that's a perfect example right there of a guy who looks normal, who acts normal. You know, and then one day just got caught, you know, but he looked normal to everyone else. And this is the kind of the case where I think it's the same deal. There's a psychological issue that he had. And whether it was his wife that set it off or, you know, and the Bible and the Bibles that were next to him, which I remember they talked about in the case, too, was a pretty, pre- uh, pretty prevalent thing, I think, that he had sympathy for what his crimes were. I don't think a random person would have went into that home and put Bibles next to their, you know, because it's such an odd thing that someone would do that unless they were trying to get some kind of sympathy for their crime. So that's why I don't find any conspiracy. Although I do see, like, the videos that I've seen with Kevin Sullivan, which looks so stupid and so ridiculous. You know, I just don't believe there was uh, any kind of conspiracy as far as someone else Involved. I think Benoit just acted alone. He did something that, you know, is unforgivable. And what do you get? You know, you can think of all the conspiracy theories as you, you can think of, but there's evidence in the case that he did it. You know, there's only three people in the house that know what happened. So everything's going to be, a, uh, you know, a guess. Only three people know what happened, and all those three people are dead. So all you can go with is what evidence is left in the home, and you have to go with what you go with. And there was no probable cause of someone else entering that home other than Benoit. And, you know, based on the state of mind and based on what we find out later, damage and all that, yeah, sure, that, that, why not? It definitely could have had, he could have some kind of psychological effect that caused him to kill these people. Yeah, I personally think that's what it was. I mean, I feel bad for Kevin Sullivan because he, uh, he was probably in Florida. Either. You know, not, he was not fair to him either. You know that he, he was probably, probably this, you know, he's a probably a very innocent person who, yeah, because they were had a storyline involvement. Okay, well they gotta assume well he's pissed and he decided on that specific day he wanted. To, if he wanted to do that, he could have done that years prior. You know, you know why he picked that time in Benoit's life, which was just a weird time. You know, I, I don't truly believe. Uh, that's why I don't truly believe that. Yeah, this is sort of That's unrelated, it. but uh, there was another guy by the name of uh, Mike Graham. He was uh, one of the bookers at WCW, and apparently him and Benoit had heat. Uh, you can see a lot of that stuff on YouTube and whatever. And uh, he he threatened to beat up Benoit or something like that. And he he felt he didn't he was not a fan of Benoit Guerrero Malenko or any of the quote unquote vanilla midgets and stuff. And apparently he was one of the main reasons Benoit jumped ship to WWF along with, uh, you know, Malenko, Guerrero. And uh, apparently uh, Shane Douglas was supposed to jump ship with him, but, 
you know, things kind of fell apart. The weird thing, though, is about him is I found this out recently is that apparently he himself also committed suicide uh, last yeah, year. Was, yeah, what's creepy about it is, is uh, I think his father did the same thing, just very creepy, a lot of disturbing stuff in this. Yeah, and there's, there's another story about how, uh, you know, Sherry Martell was kind of tied in with them as well with the whole thing with Kevin Sullivan, with Chris Benoit and Nancy, and she died like a week before. Um, so there, there's just a lot there's a lot of weird stuff, but I personally believe that Kevin Sullivan was probably chilling in Florida at his gym that he owned, and he's completely innocent, had nothing to do with this at all, and uh, that's, that's my take on it. But um, I'm going to go to the lines real quick before I go back to uh, Frank, but I'm um, going to go to the lines right now. Uh, 416 Area Code, thanks for holding. You're on the line right now with PWP Radio. What's your name? Where are you from? Yeah, uh, this is Theo from Toronto. How you doing, guys? Hey, um, how are you, man? I, What's going on? Not too not too bad, not too bad. Um, I just hear you guys talking. I kind of tuned in about a half an hour in, so I wasn't sure what you guys were talking about before. Um, just quickly to kind of uh, bring a little bit more perspective to this topic, because uh, you guys were talking about uh, a lot of the injuries uh, Benoit sustained for his love for the business and that kind of thing. Um, one of them was repeated concussions. Now, uh, the reason I mention this is there is uh, there's a show up here called The Fifth Estate. It's like the Canadian version of Dateline, and they kind of did their own piece on Benoit and what happened. And um, there was a, near the end of it, there was a part about the fact that um, people who sustain massive, who sustain continual concussions, uh, it has a cumulative effect on the brain. And um, there is a theory that basically Benoit was suffering from some sort of dementia brought on by this. Um, and uh, that, that's that been one of the theories to the case, because, again, you guys were mentioning that, he, you know, at one minute he's, uh, he's acting all normal like a man who would never contemplate uh, killing his wife and son, and then there would be times he just would uh, show this side of him liable to snap. So... Um, so I, I I don't know if anybody's touched upon that at all, and um, and I'm thinking that that's maybe one of the main reasons that why it happened the way it happened. Um, you know, I'm not at all excusing what he did and everything, but I don't believe it's fair to tarnish or erase him from the history of uh, a business he brought a lot to, and um, you know, just uh, had a passion for. Uh, actually, there was a it, interesting part of it is that um, Chris Nowinski, I don't know if you guys remember him. He was uh, in the sure. WWE about uh, uh, 10 years ago. He was like the second runner. He was like the runner-up in Tough Enough. He actually quit the business because he suffered a career-ending concussion. And Absolutely. he's been doing kind of research on his own as to what effects on sports stars concussions have. And he's he's found some data in terms of, you know, just uh, – the deterioration of the brain because of these concussions and people doing these these very type things not not necessarily murdering but suicide or or, or having these kinds of psychological issues um, and he actually requested and I don't know whatever came of this he actually requested Benoit's family or I guess uh, next of kin um, for actually Benoit's brain to study so anyway uh, yeah. you know not rambling on about it. Uh, it's just uh, I'm thinking that 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 there is just some sort of um, deep so psychological problems that that were going on in him, and it could be brought about because of the concussions and the years of uh, injuries. And um, you know, bottom line, and what he did was was reprehensible. But I don't think it's any justification to completely erase him from uh, the legacy of wrestling. So you know, it's it's really just a <laughs> something you don't gloss over but at the same time it's not something that you um that you used it's it's a really mixed bag we're we're kind of tripping on a minefield here it's a really controversial subject so but uh you know my theory is remember the man for what he brought to the ring and i'm just hoping one day that it's proven that uh you know that it was brought about by just years of concussions and that actually it opens up the door as to trying to uh, ensure the well-being of these guys who are risking risking everything, like you know, their bodies to to, to give us something that we love. So, anyway, well, that's, that's, that's all I wanted to say. So, all right, thanks. That's the silver lining right there I talked about before, though, man. It's like the silver lining is now the WWE and other wrestling organizations out there they realize that these headshots are pointless and stupid, and that it doesn't need to happen. And that's a direct 
line from Chris Benoit and what happened with him. His brain was definitely a mishmash, and a lot of these wrestlers' brains are like that. They're completely screwed. Uh, you go back and you look at Junior Seahaw, famous uh, pro football linebacker who committed suicide last year. Now, he decided just to kill himself, and they did figure out that he suffered from the same type of problems that Chris Benoit suffered from as well. Um, they're not sure of the extent because you just don't – you can't – the guy's not alive anymore to ask him what exactly his mental issues are. You can't interview him or anything like that. But their brains were very similar. And, uh, yes, Chris Benoit's brain is with Chris, uh, Chris Nowinski at the Sports Legacy Institute and other wrestlers like Mick Foley's one of the guys who is also going to donate his brain to Chris Nowinski to get, you know, uh, analyzed after he passes away. So uh, thanks for bringing this off to the show, man. It was really, really good hearing from you. Oh, it's no problem, guys.